This is Bubble, the OG of no-code software builders. Building software used to take months and require heaps of money if you were non-technical. Now we can just do it all in a fraction of that time. Let's see what it's all about. This is the interface. Right in the center here, we have the canvas where all the magic happens. This is where you will be dragging, dropping, editing, and bringing your application to life. To the left of the canvas, we have our sidebar, which will contain all of the elements. The top section hosts the elements we have already thrown on the page. The bottom section is where we can select and place new elements. On the far left is our main tab bar. This allows us to switch from design view, workflow view, see our data, and more. At the very top menu bar, we have a menu for selecting pages and creating pages or reusable elements. So let me go ahead and show you how to build an app. And for this example, we are going to build a to-do list application. To start, we will need some text, an input, and a repeating group. The input is where we will type in our new tasks, and the repeating group is where the tasks we create will be displayed. Now, this is truly ugly. Let's go ahead and make it look nice. We will do that with the property editor here. Here, you can edit the appearance, where you would change the colors, the font types, and types of data. So step one, we're going to go ahead and click on the main index page and give it a title. This is what will be displayed in the browser. We will also go ahead and give the background a fancy yellow gradient. In the property editor, we can also change the layout of the page. Let's go ahead and set it to aligned parent. Everything kind of went all, all over the place, but we'll go ahead and fix that. Before we do though, let's give the page a width of 1440 pixels. All right, to organize the content, we'll go ahead and create a group that will contain all of our stuff on the page. We'll give it a width of 1200 pixels, and then let's go ahead and drag all of this content into the group. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and edit the properties of this to-do list header text. We're gonna go ahead and remove the minimum width to give it some room. We'll also adjust a few of the appearance settings. Let's also add a subheading to our to-do app and adjust the appearance slightly. Awesome, so now it is time to go ahead and edit the input. Up here, we can add the placeholder text. Let's go ahead and change the font to 18 pixels and we'll do a medium weight. Let's give it a white background color and a corner radius of 16 pixels to give it some roundness. Let's also make it pop a bit by adding a black border. Let's uncheck the fixed width so it stretches across the group container and a height of 54 pixels. Now we want a button to be able to create the to-do tasks. Before we do that, let's create a group to contain the input and button and lay them out from left to right. To do this, we can go ahead and change the container layout to row. Let's go ahead and drag that input in. Let's change the height of the input to 58 as well. All right, so let's go ahead and add the button. This button will allow us to create a task. We're gonna go ahead and change the design up a bit. I'm going to start by changing that blue background to black so it matches our design a little more. We're also gonna change the text to submit and adjust the font settings. We're also gonna match the roundness with our input, no shadow. Now onto the layout tab. The only thing we need to do here is change the vertical alignment to vertical stretch so it reaches the top and bottom of the parent container. A really important part of the design of your applications is the spacing. So what we're gonna wanna do here is give some space between the group and the input. So let's go ahead and click the parent group and check apply gap spacing and we'll just add about 16 pixels of gap. All right, now on to the design of the repeating group. So we're gonna go ahead and uncheck set fixed number of groups. We are going to want to do this so that we can view as many tasks as possible and there's no limit. We're also gonna give each row a height of 60 pixels. Let's go ahead and change the separator width to 10 pixels to give some spacing between each task, but we don't want the separator to be visible, so we change the opacity to 0%. Wonderful, so let's go ahead and give some breathing room between our elements. We will start by adding a top margin of 14 pixels to the input group and 16 pixels to the repeating group. Great, it is now time to create a group that will contain the content of our created tasks. This group will be created and appear below the next when we create a new task. We are going to change the layout to row so that we can organize the content from left to right. Let's give it a white background color and a roundness of 14 pixels. We will also add a black border to match the rest of the design. Alrighty, so before we finish the design here, let's check out the data tab. This is where you will start to see the true power of Bubble. All we need to do for this simple application is to create one data type titled task. Within the task data type, we will then create two fields, a content text field where the input text will go and a yes slash no field 
also known as like a boolean. This will tell us whether the user marked the task as complete or not. By default, the task will not be completed, so we will change this to no. Wonderful. Let's go back to the design tab and build the functionality for this to display dynamically. Let's click on the repeating group and assign the type of content as the data type task we just created. Now we want the repeating group to display all the tasks that we created. We can achieve this by selecting do a search for and just type in task. We'll then sort it by is checked so that if the task is marked as completed, then drops to the bottom of the list. Now that the repeating group is set to display all of our tasks, it's now time for us to retrieve the data and assign it to the task card group we created. Let us go ahead and create the icons that will allow us to mark the task as completed. We will search for a circle, change the color, and vertically align it to the center. Now we only want this circle to be visible if the task is not completed. So we will first uncheck this element is visible on page load and make sure that collapse when hidden is checked. To make it appear, we will go to the conditional tab and create a condition where if this task's data field is checked, is assigned a value of no, we will make it visible. We will go ahead and duplicate this icon and change the icon to the checked off circle and modify the conditional so that it displays that the task is completed. Awesome. So the icons for marking the task as completed is now finished. Let's go ahead and add some text to display the content we typed in the input form. We are going to insert some dynamic data to display the parent group's task content and make a few tweaks to the appearance. We are going to create the final element, which will be an ellipsis icon. In a normal application, you would click on this and it would pop up a menu to edit the task or something. But in this case, we will just set it to delete the task. Let's go ahead and go back to the parent group and give it some padding to give some space between the content and edges of the group. Awesome. It is now time to add some workflows. This is where the true magic happens. The workflow tab is where you will build out the logic for your application. From processing payments, signing users up, to building out the functionality for users to swipe right. <laughs> Just kidding. Our first workflow will create a task. So when we click on the submit button, we want to create a thing with a type of task. When we create this task, we always want to assign it the content we typed. So in this case, the inputs value. After this action runs, we would then reset relevant inputs, which will erase the original text we typed in the input element. Now onto building out the functionality for us to be able to mark a task as completed. We will first add a workflow to the empty circle and create an action, make changes to a thing, the thing to change is the task assigned to the group the circle is a child of. And we will change the yes slash no data field to yes. We will then want to go ahead and do the same thing to the check mark circle, but instead we're going to change the is checked data field to no. We're going to assign it the value of no. Alrighty, almost done here. The final step of our to do application is to give the ability to delete a task. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the ellipsis, add a workflow. For this workflow, we will delete a thing, in this case, the parent group's task. Nice and simple. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out real quick. Now that you have a basic understanding of Bubble, let's go ahead and take it up a notch. Check out the video on the screen if you want to learn how to build a more advanced task management software. Also, down in the description, the first link, I've created a document that contains all of my Bubble projects from all of my YouTube videos, including this one. You'll be able to go in there, get a detailed look of the workflows and design, and uh, it honestly is really the best way to learn and become better at Bubble because you're going to be able to get hands-on view of exactly what I've created. So go ahead and check it out. It is completely free, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.